We are back today with a brand new The Good, The Bad, and The Amigurumi. In today's episode, we are going to be going over Amigurumi Adventures by Claire Cooper. In this video, I will be giving you my full thoughts on this Amigurumi book and if I think you should be picking it up. But first, let's go ahead and get into the specifics of this book. Amigurumi Adventures is a book by Claire Cooper, also known as Oki Pots, on social media. The book is published by Tuva Publishing. The book says the very first print was in October of 2023. However, Amazon does state that this book was published in January of 2024. And at the time of filming, only a paperback version is available. You can purchase your own copy on the Amazon website or also through Barnes and Noble. Those are the only two stores that I found had a copy of the book. However, at this time, if you do go to Oki Pot's link tree, there is a link to where you can buy your copy. The book is currently going for $21.99 on the Amazon website. Again, this is in February of 2024, and it is currently going for $23.95 on the Barnes and Noble website. I purchased my copy in January from Amazon, and it did take a while to get to me. It took maybe about four weeks for it to arrive. So do keep that in mind. However, on the Barnes and Noble website, it looks like you could get it later on in the week. So depending on when you wanna buy this one, the shipping might be different. Let's go ahead and talk a bit about the designer of these patterns, Claire Cooper, also known as Oki Pots. Claire Cooper is a Amigurumi designer out of Australia. She does have a couple of patterns available through magazines as well as on a couple of websites. All of those links are also on the link tree. But Oki Pots also does have patterns available on her Etsy page, and these patterns are so cute. She has this collection of amulets that are crocheted amulets and good luck charms from around the world, and I think these are so cute and unique. She also has a yoga series of dolls on her Etsy that I think are so fun and I want to make a couple of those as well. She has an average rating of 4.8 stars over on Etsy, which is wonderful. And I feel like her dolls are definitely very unique. They're ones where if you look at them, you can tell that it's an Oki Pots pattern. Now, forgive me if I am wrong, but I do believe that Amigurumi Adventures is Claire Cooper's first Amigurumi book of patterns, and I am so excited to add it to my collection. So let's go ahead and take a look inside the book and see what is all inside. The book is 144 pages of Amigurumi goodness, and there are 18-ish patterns that you get in this book. I do say ish because one of the patterns, Amity, is an adorable doll that you actually can make multiple outfits for. She has a safari adventure outfit, an ocean outfit, a cooking adventure outfit, as well as a snow adventure outfit. But this book is awesome because it is actually broken up into different sections. Now she does have five named dolls you can make. Ruby the Grapefruit Girl, Amity as we were talking about earlier, Scarlet, Marigold, and Freya. In addition to those five patterns, you also get three Cactus Girl patterns, three animal patterns, Myrtle the Bee, as well as the World Dolls. Now when I first was looking at this book on Amazon. I thought this book was only going to be these animal dolls. At the time of buying my book, the pictures on Amazon were just the cover and then a simple picture of the back. There really wasn't too much other information that I saw, so I thought this was what I was getting. But I was pleasantly surprised when I then received the book in the mail and saw all these other beautiful dolls available for me to make, especially the world dolls. I think these are absolutely gorgeous and I do want to make every single one of them. I think they are fantastic. The book also has a comprehensive guide to the materials that Claire likes to use, such as hooks, 
the cotton yarn that she prefers to use, and various notions and embroidery floss and things. There is a wonderful beginning section of this book that gives you instructions on the basic crocheting stitches you're going to need, as well as it gives you tips and tricks on how to stuff, how to work in the round, tips on tension and fastening off, all of these wonderful essentials that amigurumi makers like to learn. This book is written in US terminology, but there is a conversion chart in the book that does convert all of the stitches over to UK terms as well. And it does give you a glossary of what all of the stitch abbreviations are. This book also has a guide on the face embroidery. Now, looking at all of these dolls, none of them use safety eyes. All of them have hand embroidered faces. And there is a really nice section that teaches you how Claire likes to do the embroidery, her tips and her tricks and all of that good stuff. So this book is set up in a very unique way. Now, all of these first five dolls, Ruby, Amity, Scarlet, Marigold, and Freya, all have their own dedicated patterns. In addition, Myrtle the Bee also does have her own dedicated pattern in the book. When it comes to the cactus dolls, the animal dolls, and the world dolls, all of those individual sections have their own master pattern. So there is a master pattern for the cactus dolls, there is a master pattern for the animal dolls, and a master pattern for the world dolls, and they are different from one another. So you would follow the master pattern to create the head, the body, the legs, and the arms, and then each specific doll then has its own section where you customize it based off of whatever doll you're making. Now, before we get into the good, I do want to discuss the structure of these dolls really quickly because that's what makes them so unique. So Claire refers to these as flat headed dolls and they are actually inspired by your traditional rag doll. So just as you would stitch together two panels of fabric to sew together a rag doll. The construction of these dolls are very similar. You have two crocheted pieces that you then crochet together to make the head. This results in a more flat head, which is different than your typical round headed amigurumi doll. The bodies of these dolls are constructed in a more traditional, I guess you could say, amigurumi style of doll. Some of these dolls have less detail and some of these dolls have more detail. So there is a really wide variety, I feel, of complexity to these dolls. So you can make one super quickly or one that could take a little bit longer. Some are more beginner patterns and some are definitely more intermediate patterns. It really just depends on the doll that you select. So let's go ahead and get into the good. We like to start off on a positive note here, and there is a lot to love about Amigurumi Adventures. The first thing I love about this book is the variety of patterns. Like I said, when I got this book, I thought it was just going to be these cute little animals, which I was excited for, but then I was so happy to see this variety of different adorable dolls to make. I also love that these dolls are in fact different and unique and you can tell that it is a Claire Cooper pattern when you see them because of the way the head is designed and because of the embroidered faces. I also love that some of these patterns I worked up worked up relatively quickly. There are many times where I want to make an amigurumi and I don't want to spend weeks making it. So I love those really quick patterns to where it takes me about a day or two to make something super cute and super fun and feel proud of what I've made in a short time. Also, something I love about these patterns is that the legs and the arms are no so. Yes, you crochet everything together, which is so nice. I don't mind sewing. Sewing is fine for me, but the less that I can sew and the faster I can get to making my next amigurumi creation, the better. So I love that you crochet the arms while you're crocheting up the body. It's just so nice to take out that extra step of sewing on the arms. And it's really nice to know that the arms are placed exactly where they need to be. 
There are a couple of additional details and things that are no so as well. There is a lot of surface crochet that happens, which is so exciting and it's so nice to see, especially for say scales on things. We'll get into that a little bit later when I show you the amigurumi that I made, but it's really nice to again, cut down on some of the sewing. I also like the size of these dolls a lot. Now, depending on the yarn you use, of course, determines the size of them, but they are not too small and they're not too big. So I think that they are a wonderful kind of medium size. That is the size I like to make the most when it comes to amigurumi and they were perfect for that. I also think these patterns are really well written. I think they are simple to follow and Claire Cooper does a great way of explaining to you just how many stitches you need in your crocheted piece. There are going to be times where you do a chain at the beginning of the round and she does a great job of letting you know if that chain does count as a stitch or if it doesn't and also is really clear about what your ending stitch count can be. Sometimes when you're counting chains or not counting chains it can be a little unclear at the end of the round just how many stitches you need. I don't know, at least I do get confused sometimes, but that never happened in this book. I always knew exactly how many stitches I needed with or without that chain by the end of every row. But now that we've talked about the good of these patterns, let's go ahead and get into the bad. Now, just a quick disclaimer, the term bad is mostly just for the fun title. None of these things that I'm about to talk about are bad when it comes to the patterns, I think that they are really good patterns. These are just going to be the things that I personally don't like to do when crocheting. And these are kind of just some aesthetic things that I don't like the look of. Again, these are all personal for me. Everybody is different when it comes to crocheting. So what I might not like, you might love. So take everything I'm about to tell you with a grain of salt. So even though I do love the shape of the heads being that more flat ragdoll style, the way it's crocheted with the two pieces leaves the magic ring kind of in the middle of the face. And I really don't like the look of that. I was discussing this with my Twitch chat and some people did agree with me that it kind of almost gives this optical illusion of like a third eye in the middle of the forehead. And it's just not my preferred look. I do want to mention this though, the more and more that I worked these dolls up and the more and more that I looked at this book, the less I noticed the obvious magic circle in the middle of the face. So it is possible it's something that you could overlook as time goes on, but it's still just not my favorite. I still can tell, I can still see that magic ring and it just draws my eye right to the middle of the face and I just don't like it. One other thing that I wasn't a big fan of, as mentioned, some of these patterns have a master pattern. So the cactus dolls, the animal dolls, and the world dolls all have that master basic pattern at the front of their sections. And you follow that and then you add on all of the elements based off of the doll that you're crocheting. What this does though, is it causes a lot of flipping back and forth between that master pattern and the pattern that you're working on. And at times it was a little confusing for me. It is a lot of flipping back and forth because every doll is constructed so differently, especially the world dolls. You don't actually make the base pattern the same for every doll. Some dolls, the dress is a little bit different. Some dolls, the sleeves, it is a little bit different. So to have a base arm pattern, but then have the sleeves different on all of the dolls makes it kind of confusing sometimes. Now, although the patterns are written well and I didn't experience any issues with stitch counts or rows or anything like that, I did want to mention this to you. When I was working up the alligator pattern, there was a bit of a mistake when it came to the yarn color. So for example, when it comes to crocheting up the snout and the tail of the alligator, it mentions to use the main color yarn to make those two pieces. However, 
in the pattern, the main color yarn that is listed is your skin tone that you need for the face, the arms, and the legs. Naturally, I wasn't going to make a peach tail or snout, so I just changed that over to the green. It wasn't that big of an issue, but still, if you are relatively new to crochet, this might be kind of confusing. So keep that in mind. There was a couple of typos, at least in that pattern that I made. The other three patterns that I made, I didn't have any issues with the patterns itself or typos or anything like that. And lastly, the main thing that I don't particularly care about when it comes to these patterns is the embroidered faces. Now, I love the look of them in the book. I think Claire Cooper does an amazing job embroidering her dolls, and that's really what drew me into buying this book was the sweet and darling faces. Now, I'm not great at embroidery. As you guys know, I just recently bought the Ginger Melons Embroidered Animals to actually improve my embroidery skills, but I still do enjoy embroidery when I do it, but I really didn't enjoy embroidering the faces for these dolls because I found it really hard to get everything even and symmetrical. Due to the nature of crochet and the way it leans, due to the nature that I crochet and the way my stitches lean, and because these patterns are worked in the two flat panels that you then combine together, it was really hard to count the stitches to see where to put the eyes. When making a doll such as Malala Yousafzai here, this is from the first book of Crochet Iconic Women by Carla Mantrani, and you're placing the eyes it's much easier because you have the row of stitches here to figure out where to put the eyes you place it on the row that you need and then you just count the stitches in between with these dolls it is much harder because you don't have that perfect line so it was really hard for me to count the amount of stitches i was having to split stitches to get everything even and it was just a big hassle we'll get more into the faces here in a moment when i go over my amigurumi that i made but that was my biggest complaint with the book i love the look of the embroidered eyes in the book i love how claire cooper has embroidered her eyes but personally for for me, I struggled with it. It was really hard and I was getting very frustrated when embroidering the faces on my dolls. Which leads me to the Amigurumi. These are the dolls that I personally made from this book over the past month. I wanted to get a variety of all of the different patterns that are in this book. So I did make Ruby here. You've been seeing her as I've been talking about the book. I did also make Emma the Crocodile. From the cactus doll section, I did make Pia the Prickly Pear Cactus. And from the world dolls, I did do the Argentina one, which is Martina. Now, the first one I finished was Ruby here. And I think I had the most fun with Ruby, to be honest. I think she turned out super fun. I did crochet her with the typical worsted weight cotton that I like to use. And I used a three millimeter crochet hook. I did use embroidery floss for her face. And her face is actually my favorite one that I embroidered. I don't think it is perfect but it is good enough and I'm fairly happy with her. I love her cute little Betty bangs that she has going on and I just love the outfit. I don't know it just screams summer and I love grapefruit. I think grapefruit is one of the best fruits. Mm, so yummy. And yeah, I just had a great time making her. Now, Ruby here does have a little basket that I crocheted as well, but I had a really fun time with that one. For Ruby here on her pants and in the basket, there was a lot of spike stitches and I love making spike stitches. I think the detail that a spike stitch gives to Nami Gurumi is so fun and cute and it's such a simple stitch that just changes up the look of the crochet so much. I had so much fun with Ruby. Overall, really no complaints with making Ruby here. The next doll that I completed was Martina here and I did have a pretty fun time with her. She took me a little bit longer to make. When I crocheted her up, my kiddo was sick and so we didn't do anything that day. So I actually crocheted from 
the time we woke up basically until bedtime. And so I was able to finish her in about a day, but she was definitely the most involved of the dolls that I made. She has the most detail for sure. And if I hadn't crocheted her up on the day that I didn't do anything, this one would have taken a couple of days for sure. I did want to change up my hook size. So I went up to a 3.5 hook for Martina here. And I did use the same worsted weight cotton that I typically use. And she did turn out a little bit bigger than Ruby here. I think the pattern itself would have been bigger in general, even if I used a three millimeter hook, but by going up to the 3.5, she did turn out to be a little bit larger, but I did really struggle with her face. You can see her face is leaning. It is. It just was so hard for me to match up all of the stitches. I mean, maybe I could have done a better job, but I even pulled out like some string and was like draping string across the face to make sure everything was even. For whatever reason, I just struggled with embroidering the faces. I think she turned out fine, but she's still not perfect. Now nobody's face is symmetrical. I understand that. And I do understand that a lot of times, especially with handmade things, they're not going to be perfect, but there is some big differences in her face. It is what it is. I'm still happy with her and I think that she is really fun. But what's really cool about Martina here is how you make her dress. I'm not going to get into it because if you want to see this tip, you'll have to buy the book, but you crochet the dress in a way that it makes it really easy for Martina to stand up and it is brilliant. What Claire Cooper did with this body with the dress to make these dolls stand up is amazing. I've never made an amigurumi this way before. I don't know if other designers have done this as well, but it is so cool and I love that she stands up unassisted. The next doll that I finished is Emma the Crocodile here and I did decide to make her in a different weight. So I used a DK weight for her and a 2.75 millimeter hook and I must say this is the size that I prefer. I think Ruby here is a really good size and I do like the size, but I feel like when I do make more of these dolls in the future, I will definitely be going to the smaller hook and the lighter weight yarn. I like it so much more and I do believe that the yarn that Claire Cooper uses is a DK weight as well. Don't quote me on that, I can't remember. By the time I got to Emma here, I was over the embroidery of the face. I stopped using embroidery floss and I decided to go with just a DK weight yarn. And I really like how that worked out. And I decided to do the most simple eyes that are in the book because I just didn't wanna be bothered with the embroidery anymore. Looking at her now, I do enjoy how she looks. She is super cute. This is what I wanted to talk about earlier when it came to the surface crochet. So when it comes to all of these little spikes, I didn't have to sew any of those on. It is all surface crochet. You put your hook inside there, then you make your little spikes and then weave in your ends at the end. It was so nice to not have to sew those on. Mm. I loved that detail. But that's Emma. She is really cute, isn't she? I am I am very happy with her as well. Boy oh boy. Lastly is Pia. The prickly pear. Now, there were some problems with Pia. Um, one, she was the last one I finished, but the very first one I actually started. So I started crocheting Pia on my Twitch stream and I actually had run out of this yarn here. This was a discontinued cotton. And so I ran out. I didn't have any more. It was discontinued. So it's not like I could go buy more. Um, so her head is actually two different colors, but I don't think it's awful. To be honest, I don't hate the two different colors and I love the overall look of her. I think she is wonderful, but I just struggled so much with her face and I wish her face was different. I tried embroidery and I did the simple V eyes and I just did not like the look of that at all. So then I decided to cut out some more oval felt shapes to give her the look that Ruby here has, but just with felt and I didn't have to embroider it. I wasn't terribly happy with how far apart Ruby's eyes were. So I decided to try to make 
Pia's here a little bit lower and a little bit closer together to see if I liked that more. And I didn't, I hated that so much, but I had already hot glued those eyes on and there was no changing it. So we resorted to the final eyes, which are the felt eyes that I made. I made these because they look a lot like my illustration style that I make when I illustrate characters and things. And I just thought it would be fun to give her more of a look that is similar to the artwork that I make. And I think that it looks cute. I do like the felt eyes on there, but I do wish that they were embroidered. I do wish I was better at embroidery and I do wish it was way easier for me to embroider them. Again, I do need to get better at it, but I just, I don't know. I would love Pia so much more if her face was perfect. <laughs> That's awful to say. I'm so sorry, Pia. I don't mean it that way, but you know what I mean? I just, I wish that her face was different. That's all. Not particularly fond of her face, but I do think she is really cute. And overall, I am very happy with all of the dolls that I have made, even though embroidering their faces was really frustrating. Which leads me to my final thoughts. Do I recommend Amigurumi Adventures by Claire Cooper? And the answer is yes, I do. I do think it is really cute. I think that the variety of patterns is excellent. And I think they are so unique that it would be nice to Add to your collection and have something a little bit different than some of the other amigurumis that you might make. The patterns are written extremely well. You're not going to run into too many issues besides the color issue that I ran into with Emma the Crocodile. And depending on which doll you choose, you could make up a cute little doll relatively quickly. Or if you want a more detailed project, you have that with the world dolls as well. So I think the variety of patterns that you get in this book is excellent. If you are a very beginner amigurumi maker, meaning you haven't really crocheted any amigurumi, I would maybe get a couple of more beginner patterns under your belt before you move on to these ones. I would say these are definitely more advanced beginner patterns to intermediate patterns, but they're not so detailed to where you're going to be frustrated and overwhelmed because of the amount of details or because the amount of unique stitches or the way that the patterns are designed. I think Claire Cooper has some other amazing patterns on her Etsy page that I can't wait to add to my collection. I do plan to work out of this book again, so you know it's a book that I would recommend if I'm gonna pick it up again. Absolutely, I do plan to make more of these. I just need to get better at my embroidery skills or come up with a way to make the faces that I want for these adorable dolls. But that is my full review on Amigurumi Adventures by Oki Pots. Tell me, do you have this book or is this one that you've been interested in? I'm curious to know your thoughts. Also, do you have a recommendation for the next book that I should do for my good, the bad, and the Amigurumi series? I would love to hear your recommendations. They don't have to be brand new released books. They can be old books. Please let me know. Drop any and all suggestions into the comment box. But that's all I have to say about that. I love you so much. You are so wonderful. I hope you have a fantastic week and I will see you all a little later. Bye.